Hi, Karen. I'm so happy to see you. Happy uh, July 25th. Two years. Katie, happy two-year almost anniversary, including from the car that just went by and honked. Oh my gosh. (laughs) We did our first episode July 27th of 2020. That's insane. July 27th, 2020 feels truly like it could have been 10 years ago. And it's just, it's unbelievable to me that this is now our 95th episode. I actually, I got my eyebrows waxed today and my esthetician person, her name is Alina. She's great. She's also like 12, but not really. She's like 25, but still, she seems really young. And she was like, Hey, are you still doing that podcast project? And I was like, yeah, I'm recording my 95th episode today. And like, and she, I wasn't a bitch about it, but she was just like, Oh wow. Like you're really into it. And I was like, Oh no, this is a huge part of my life. Alina. Thanks. Yeah, exactly. Listen, Alina, <laughs> we're podcast superstars. We are. We're on our way to building our own empire of podcasting. So thank you very much. But yeah, seriously though, two years, that's wild. Listeners, thank you all for those of you who are brand new. And for those of you who have tuned in diligently every single week, we love you. We couldn't be doing this. We wouldn't be doing this without you. I mean, actually, I feel like Katie, even if we didn't think a single person was listening, we would still get together every week and record ourselves with these fancy microphones. We would. I mean, this is like our matching mics are such a big draw to talking to each other, but also, (laughs) (laughs) but also, yes, we would absolutely be talking to each other. And I would love to think that we also would be talking to each other, even if we didn't have a pod and we would just be catching up like normal exactly. people that don't have a pod, but I'm glad that we do have a pod and it's all thanks to you, Karen, that had this great idea. And I seriously am so grateful because this has been such a, um, st- I know we talk about it, but like a stable force in my life over the past two years and the past two years have just been wild and crazy bad shit. Yeah. It, no, put it lightly. Yeah. Just, a uh, unfathomable. And, you know, I tell people all the time, do a leap, Emily King and Katie got me through the pandemic. Yes. <laughs> oh, Dua Lipa. I still <gasps> need to listen to Emily King, but Dua Lipa for sure. Oh my gosh. So I saw Emily King quick aside. Oh, quick that's tangent. right. So Emily King, who y'all is one of my favorite singers on the planet, and she's just the most adorable human, opened for Nora Jones. Oh, here. yeah. That's this amazing. In Chicago was the first stop on their tour. They're touring together. And obviously, and we were the first stop. And so Emily comes out, comes out and does her set. And my friends and I went to see Emily King, right? Like we're all yeah. stands. And Nora Jones, great. So Emily leaves. We're all sad. We're like, I'm sure. I had just texted a friend. I'm sure Nora Jones is going to bring Emily back and they're going to do a song together. I mean, they well, must. Oh my God, <gasps> Katie. Nora Jones is like, Please welcome back to the stage, everyone, Emily King and Chicago. We have a very special surprise for you, Mavis Staples. <gasps> when I tell you, people lost their goddamn minds, like lost their minds. Holy I, like, shit. My head. I mean, come on. Mavis Staples. Wait, you you just went to this, right? Like this was like a week ago or something. It was today is Wednesday. Hi, dog. Um, And this was Friday. Oh, my gosh. I'm so happy for you. That's holy crap. How was it? I bet that was just epic. It really, it was like, I just get chills thinking about it. It was, they did one song together and it was so beautiful. Emily King on Instagram and not on Instagram, on YouTube and probably all of her other socials has like a spliced together video of like them rehearsing backstage and then walking Mavis out and then the performance itself. And it's just, their voices together were just like so beautiful. It was, oh, it was magical. I just wow. missed live music so much. That's so wonderful. I'm so glad you had fun. Was it in like an outdoor venue or was it indoors? Is it like United Center vibes or like, what was it? Oh, I cannot do the United Center, yeah, even I in guess. the before times. Not I know, so much. it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there are very few people I would see at the United Center. So uh, no, this was at uh, Northerly Island, Oh, which is downtown. And it's one of my favorite venues, actually. It's outside and it is right on Lake Michigan. And so you have the lake at your back, which you can't really see. But then the stage is positioned so that you can see the skyline over the stage. And oh my it's gosh. just a really cool, yeah, it's a really cool experience. The chairs are really uncomfortable, but it was great. Mm, that sounds amazing. 
I mean, the music made up for it. Like the Sorbots, I'm sure it was totally worth it. That's amazing. Nora Jones, my God, I haven't heard that name in such a long time. Like she is a legend and it's, you know, she's, does she have new stuff? Or like, I love her old stuff too, even if she didn't have new stuff. I have no idea. Yeah. I, I don't know what of what she performed. Like the one of the friends I went with is, is that was the Nora Jones fan. Like had never heard of Emily King, but loves Nora Jones. And like, I could tell when, Nora Jones was singing a song from their first album because my friend was like super excited, but I don't don't know. That's so cool. Oh, that's so awesome. Wow. I also love that. Like when, so last week when we were talking about happy songs and is it TJ Moore or PJ Moore, PJ Moore, no Morton. Yes. PJ Morton (laughs) really botched that. Okay. (laughs) PJ Morton. And I have, I was obsessed with the song, How Deep Is Your Love, all weekend. I've been listening to it ever since we talked last week. Listeners, seriously, like, look it up. PJ Moore, how, Morton. <laughs> seriously, what the fuck? PJ Morton, How Deep Is Your Love, look it up. Just don't listen to me. But then I texted you and he was playing the next day in Chicago, which I completely understand why you would have fatigue. It was actually sold out, but you could get tickets on StubHub, but they were, I mean, they were kind of expensive. So like, yeah, I, you know. I mean, I did think about going because I do love him. He's got so many great songs. So there's the original, there's the album version of that cover, How Deep Is Your Love? And then there's a live version with Yebba. I don't know. Yes. You. <gasps> That's the one I love. Breathtaking. I I've never that. even heard of Yebba and I now love Yebba. Oh no, you got to go down the Yebba rabbit hole. She's I mean, so good. She's so good. Like she like, yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why this is coming to me, but I watched the video and I was like, she looks so normal. And then her voice, it's like, what? That's the same person. It didn't really correlate to the, to the look, but yeah, she's amazing. Every time I hear her voice, I think exactly that. How does that sound come out of a human's body? I don't yes. understand. It. She's so beautiful. I mean, it's a beautiful, like, it's like, it's incredible. So that's, I love that. I love that you saw Emily King. I love that you saw Nora, Nora, Nora Jones and Mavis Staples. How old? Mavis Staples is, is she old or is she not old? I'm thinking that Mavis Staples, I think, who am I thinking when I think about Mavis Staples? Because no, you're thinking of the right person. Like the Emma? Staples singers, like. Staple. Oh my Hey God. Google, how old is Mavis Staples? She looks to be 83. Is that right? No, is she 83? 83. That's amazing. No. What a legend. Oh my God. She looks amazing and she sounded beautiful. Really? That's holy incredible. shit. Oh, black don't crack. I'll tell Good you what. For her. Oh my God. How wonderful. Like, that's just mm. so awesome. I bet, I seriously bet everyone was just freaking out the whole time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, she's not, is she Chicago? Is she like, oh, yeah, she, yeah. Oh, got it. Got it. Okay. Is she like seen around town? How fun would that be? I'm sure she is. I'm sure. I'm assuming she still lives here. She, she recorded an album with Wilco a couple years ago. Like oh, she still cool. records. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. Uh, okay. So yes. All right. Two years. Here we go. So there is a lot to unpack, Karen, in the last two years. Um, you created this beautiful Google Doc all about our first episode, our intro episode, which my God, I need to listen to it. I really do. Because you just said you did recently, right? I, right before we talked. I know you're very impressed with this document, but I literally made it like 10 minutes before we got on the phone. <laughs> I listened to it. And I, cause I wanted to get a sense of, did we, have we, not that we're done, have we so far set out to do what we set out to do? Mm-hmm. Have we done what we set out to do? Yeah. And it really feels like we have, and this is not an end. This is just a, you know, along the road check. Like, I mean, it's, it's amazing. Like the things that you wrote down that we said in this episode, the goal of the project to make it okay to talk about not being okay. I mean, every minute of every podcast, (laughs) like that's basically every theme of every single one. That's for sure. Correct. Yes. And I feel like you had really eloquent things to say. These quotes in here are from you, by the way, um, that you for the first time were hearing from unexpected people, people's vulnerable realities. And you said, I'm hearing the truth that like you said, like you and I have always had these 
very vulnerable, very let's jump into the deep end. This is exactly what's going on in the conversations, but that month four of the pandemic, you were starting to have conversations with people who you would never had those with and that pe- more people were opening up about not being okay. Mm-hmm. Totally. Oh my gosh. I mean, I remember that vividly because I was on calls multiple times a week back then with the co-working space that I was part of. And there were a lot of tears at that point. Like there were, and this, these are all women who are, you know, the CEOs of their own businesses. And like, yeah, of course, like we can be vulnerable and it's a norm, like it's a safe space, but there weren't the usual suspects back then that were saying the things that were honest in terms of, and I mean, by honest, I mean like more vulnerable than they normally would. They were, you know, yeah, I do remember that actually pretty, pretty vividly that people were saying things. And I think back then we were still having zoom calls with our friends. Like I remember Tyler and I, we just, we were not even meeting people for, I mean, nothing like there. I don't even think that by in July, maybe some of the parks in San Francisco, cause we were living in Sausalito at the time, like maybe some of the parks were open at that point, but I don't think so because I feel like it was so shut down that, you know, it was, we were having these zoom calls. We were, we thought they were so cute too. We were like, oh, this is so fun to like, you know, catch up with our friends. And then that became like not fun, but I feel like by July of 2020, it was kind of still fun and like novel. I was just going to say novel. And I feel like we felt so clever, like, oh, here's this technology that we're using for work and we're using it socially. Look at us. Totally. I remember talking to Kate Silver and her husband, Neil, and, um, they, (laughs) I remember like we had a conversation with them and a couple actually, but like, this was definitely around that time frame, And we were like, what did you guys do tonight? And they're like, oh my God, we went for this long walk and it was so cool. And I was eating a chocolate bar at the time. And Kate's like, what kind of chocolate is that? I'm going to order it on Amazon. And it was like, there was such a good vibe. It was just like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. And like, we're seeing each other. We would never zoom to like, I would just wait until we came to Chicago the next time. But yeah. It was nice. It's nice now looking back and knowing that I didn't know what I didn't know. <laughs> oh shit. I mean, that is real. Oh yeah. No, if you'd told those people, oh, if you told us in July of 2020, what the fuck was about to happen? Oh my God. Oh no. No, yeah. no. I know. Like you put on this list, like things that were happening in July, we thought we'd have Christmas. Like that's real for sure. I didn't even think about it, Karen. Like I was like, well, of course, I mean, yes. Okay. It's not going to be a two week thing, but there's no way this is going to be like an eight month thing, let alone a two and a half year thing. Oh my God. Well, the other thing I have in here is that you reminded me was companies were releasing their return to work plans for the fall of 2020. Yes. Yes. And like, get ready. Like, okay, if you want to, you know, work remote, like you have about six weeks left people, like just FYI, like, you know, start getting, start getting ready to see your people again. In the office, in person, in the office, in person, like what kinds of like back then, like what were the conversations that were happening in, you know, the decision maker boardrooms? I I can't even imagine. Like they were probably like, well, we have to say something. So we have, we're going to say this, like, this is totally ridiculous like totally ridiculous like I I remember I was telling you before we hit record like I have a friend that works at a big tech company and the tech companies were pretty silent back then I remember in the summer like they were not really saying much it was like okay they're not gonna you know we'll figure it out at the at the time like we we just didn't know like when big tech companies were going to go back and that's such a big deal in the bay area because everyone works in tech and so I remember one of the tech companies came out and they were like, Hey, so we're going to go back to the office September 1st. And I remembered that being like such an enormous deal. I'm like, Oh my God, I can't believe they're not going to go back in like the end of, you know, August or the the beginning of August. I don't know. It was just very strange. So, yeah, I mean, I just feel like back then we, there was no, I mean, there was no template for like what was about to happen or, I mean, Trump was still president. Fuck. We didn't have vaccines. We didn't even have, I don't even, I guess it was in the back of my head that that's how this would end eventually was vaccines. I definitely think that in July of 2020 though, it was Fauci on the news every night, like, 
you know, talking about masking, talking about distancing, talking about like, this is serious, this is serious, take this seriously. And Trump telling us to drink bleach um. and <laughs> like, and, you know, I do remember very vividly thinking like, damn, we haven't had any mass shootings like in the past couple of weeks or a couple of months, um, which I know that just went real dark, but that's just true. And I, yeah, I mean, there were a lot of things that were happening that, yeah, I, I just heard the other day that Fauci is going to retire if, mm. um, or in the next presidential uh, administration, I think, or something like that. I mean, he's in his eighties anyway. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Well, the opposite of that dark reality is like, I was just thinking like restaurants weren't open. Oh God. Like you could not dine in at a restaurant. No, you didn't have an option. There were no oh. options. Mm -mm. No. I mean, I don't even, I can't, I don't remember the first time I ate at a patio even. I'm sure it was that summer, right? Or maybe not. Yeah. It, for me, it was that summer. I remember Tyler and I we're going batshit and we went probably around that time to a hotel it was like a cottage that we rented and it was in this town and we went outside and ate it on a patio and it was the scariest thing in the world like oh my god it was so scary but it was also like there i mean remember when you went i remember going back to restaurants and only like four of the tables were even in existence yes. it was it was really just a takeout like that's really what it was the, the business was takeout and they were like oh a few people want to come in all right well we're gonna have our line cooks be their servers like that's cool you know totally wow that's wild but that was when we were sitting down and talking to each other me at my house in sausalito you at your downtown apartment Yes. God. Wow. <laughs> I, I should also say, so of course you have moved to Bend. I now live on the north side of Chicago. I don't live downtown anymore in a high rise. And like, in addition to you getting me through the pandemic, like my girls up here, like I moved closer to the church ladies and yes. I a million, trillion percent would not have gotten through this without them. Yes. Yeah. I mean, they are, there's a reason you call them the church ladies. Like they're yes. truly divine creatures. Like they are <laughs> amazing. And yes. I'm yeah. so glad that, th that you all are together. I seriously am like, cause it's like, I think that's, you know, maybe that's just part of what crystallized during that time was like, yeah. you know, like we can't be without the people that we love, or we can't be in places that we don't love. Yeah. And like, as we've talked about a couple of times, that importance of community and safely building a community, right? Like, you know, I yes. didn't have a pod in July of 2020, I was still downtown and my pod was my partner at the time. We weren't yes. seeing anybody. So totally, totally. Very grateful. Yeah. I mean, I, it's so interesting because it's like when I was in July of 2020, I had this whole community around me, but that I couldn't see. And mm -hmm. so then it's like Tyler and I move up to Bend and then it was like, oh, okay, well, we really don't have anyone. Like we had one couple that was here, but yeah, the isolation, man, I will say that for me, I think it really hit me in like February of 2021. Like I, I, I hit a pretty significant mental health slump at that point. Cause that was like, they're really, I mean, yes, the vaccines were sort of coming out, but really only for people who were of a certain age or preexisting conditions. And like, it wasn't until I would say like March that I realized like, oh, we actually all are going to get this. So that's a long time from July, but yeah. Yeah. And I mean, February, 2021. So January 20, January 6th has happened. Yes. Right. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's another thing. I think that in June or July, excuse me, July of 2020, when we started this pod, like, yes, Trump was horrible. Yes. Trump, there's not, there's nothing to say anything positive about him. Not ever, not ever. And I would never have guessed that something like the January 6th insurrection. I don't think God, anyone. Yeah. Fuck? Yeah. No. So Oh God. But yes, on the lighter side, Jennifer Lopez was still dating <laughs> Alex Rodriguez. <laughs> and now she's married to Ben Affleck. So mazel, JLo, you know, like yeah. that's great. 
yeah, I just, I mean, A-Rod is kind of a dick apparently. So yeah, I mean, maybe not. I don't know. I don't know A-Rod. I've never met A-Rod, but like, you know, <laughs> I just, I guess I kind of feel bad saying someone's a dick if I never met them. So, uh, I mean, kind of how I feel about Ben Affleck. Really? Yeah. R- like, really? Yeah. I don't know. I, I can't see them together. Although, I mean, if we're going to go on a little tangent about Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck, <laughs> I'm, I'm here for it, Karen, because like, I do very, very much remember their dating back in like, what was I mean, 2005 or something? Like, it oh was, my God. Do you remember it? Was it that like, long ago? Oh, it was like 18 years ago. Like it was a really long time ago. Yeah. And like she wore that dress that wasn't, I don't know, that was actually with, when she was with Puff Daddy. Okay, whatever. Anyway. Oh, <laughs> uh, maybe it was 2003. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, her and Benifer. 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 Yeah, that's wild. But yeah, good for them. They want to be together and yay for love. So I don't know. I mean, I did. I did go. <laughs> this is yay for love. I mean, I watched. So when I had COVID, I went into a lot of shitty television, and one of them was Halftime, which is the Jennifer Lopez documentary, naturally, about her halftime show at the Super Bowl. <laughs> And like, oh my God, I'm not, I'm, I'm truly not a JLo hater. I mean, she's fine. Like she's impressively successful, obviously, in like what she's done, but like, damn, I loved that documentary, Karen. <laughs> like, oh I really my God. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, I, I don't know if I'd recommend it, but I definitely was like, JLo is the best. Like this, she's so incredible. Like, I mean, now having like a week of distance, I'm like, okay, it was just an advertisement for JLo, but yeah, anyway. I don't know how I got on that. She's very talented. And I will say on my recent road trip, Spotify, so someone made me a playlist, my ride home, but the way there, my playlist ended. And so Spotify kept just spitting songs at me that that it thought I would like. And there were a lot of J-Lo songs. And I was like, oh, J-Lo had some bangers. I forgot. She did. Yeah. Yeah. She had a lot of number one hits or a lot of like, you know. Like, I mean, I really remember like early 2000s. Yeah, she was big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, happy marriage, J-Lo and Ben. (laughs) Couldn't have, couldn't have thought that would happen on July 27th of 2020. 2020. No. Yeah. I should also note that July 27th, 2020, we were an audio project. We weren't a podcast yet. Very good point. We were very much in our embryo stage our like maybe not even embryo we were like a one cell organism like we were like <laughs> we were i'm going to stop there i, I was just um, about to, yeah anyway but yes we we were very very new we were just like we were too afraid we didn't want to say that we were a podcast we didn't i mean no we didn't know what we were doing and i feel like it's interesting because the move, your move to bend gave us this chance to like reset and say, okay, we're going to be a podcast. It's season two. I think that's how we did it. Right. I it's think you're me. right. That's okay. it, such a good memory. You have such a good memory. That's you're absolutely right. Because I, we had gone, it was like 12 episodes and then it was like, I had to take two weeks off and you're like, this is a perfect time. Katie. We should say we're a podcast now. And I was like, <gasps> should we? And then it's like, who are the podcast gatekeepers? Nobody. We're making this shit up every week. So like, why not? So yeah, it worked. It worked. So proud of us. I'm so proud of us too. I really <laughs> am actually. <laughs> I'm patting myself and you on the back. I mean, I, I'm i so excited that like this took off in a way that like I never could have anticipated. I also think that I had like zero expectations for anything. And so like, I think that's also a ticket to success in my opinion agreed no plan no expectations we yeah. didn't get michelle obama yet yet but- i mean yet people we're taking off in a uh, year two so yeah this is or year three i guess <gasps> oh my god well would you call this year two we're going into year two we're entering year three we're entering year three that makes more sense yes Wow. I know. I mean, Michelle, we're here for you. I mean, this is, 
<laughs> you never know. We might get a publicist. Like all of this. I mean, if anyone knows of a publicist that has connections, I guarantee you that the 57 people that listen to this podcast, <laughs> at least one of them has like less than six degrees of separation to Michelle Obama. That's my guess. Oh, yeah. For sure. Someone has a cell phone number. Hit us up, people. You know who you are. <laughs> But we also talked about having focus groups, which was so interesting. Like we were going to talk to people about like their feelings and what they wanted to talk about. And I'm still here for that. I think that would be kind of fun. I mean, I don't know exactly how we do it exactly, but yeah. Well, and the idea of the focus groups was to help us transition from an audio project to a podcast. Like these people were going to tell us what they wanted. Oh, yeah. Yes. Like we were going to talk to people about what they felt like they wanted and conversations people weren't having and creativity and mental health and all of these things. And that, that we were going to take all of that data. And that was going to be season one, this kind of testing lab. Yes. And then season two, we were going to be a podcast and we didn't do it. You're right. We didn't do it. You're like, fuck that. We're just going to make this shit up every single week and it's going to be awesome, which it is. Like we did, we stayed like in one lane. We talked about like, we've, I mean, we've talked about so many things, grief and like, and you know, creativity and manifesting rage, rage so much rage, so much anger. I mean, that's, that's a forever hot topic in my opinion yeah like sleep insomnia like all of these different things it's really great it's wow. weird looking back on it because it's like it like, this like kind of takes me out of it a little bit and it's like I don't know I'm always in it like we get on the phone we're here we're going it's like boom we have an hour or nine minutes last week <laughs> and, <laughs> and then we just go on with our life like it's interesting to look at it from a bird's eye view Absolutely. It really is impressive. It is. I know. I know listeners, we just keep talking about how wonderful we are, but it really, you're right. When you take a step back from it, I can't believe we've done 95 episodes because we just take it for granted. And I think that that was the other thing I was thinking about it. Like we were talking about before we hit record this idea that we had this conversation, our first episode about what we were going to do. We set out the goals for this project mm -hmm. and then we just did it without ever talking about the goals again. <laughs> Never, not once. This is the first time in real right? time. Yeah. Exactly. Like, it's not <laughs> like, yeah, I was saying, it's not like every time we were like, okay, let's take the first five minutes of the session, just revisit our vision statement and mission. Like, no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 not even a little. It was more like verbal diarrhea for an hour before we hit record and then get our shit together and then record something and then and then verbal diarrhea after we hit record so there's a lot of that which is what friendship is yeah. <laughs> which is the beauty of friendship yeah and but I think you know like you pointed out we we did the things we set out to do without like it was just baked into what we were doing right like Yes. It, we just had internalized it. It was just part of what we were doing. Like we just did it. And yeah, I, I don't know if you're ready to talk about, all right. Should we talk about the guests we've had briefly? Yes. Okay. I want to talk about the guests. I would love to. These are just such amazing human beings. Okay. Take it away. Oh, okay. <laughs> so from most recent to our very first guest. So of course our most recent guest is the guest we have had on the most times. And that number of times, as it turns out, is five. Five. Is Dr. Tanya Israel. The luminous, the <sighs> incredible Dr. Tanya Israel, which, by the way, I mean, talk about a fortuitous Google search. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like that was just, I mean, let's talk about that. Okay, so she came on on episode seven. So she was our second guest. And <laughs> that... I, re I don't actually remember. How did that work? Oh, I do remember. Okay. So I remember when I Googled her and the reason I Googled her, this is very specific. Oh, this is awful. So I have a very close friend who she, I can't identify her. Let's see. Uh, how am I going to say this? Um, okay. So she came, 
she was the one of the people that I was able to see during uh, the early part of the pandemic. And she came over crying one day and she said, my dad just told me that he's going to cut me out of his will um, if I don't like start telling him that I like Trump. And like, they are actually a really close family. Like it, it was so, 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 so out of left field that I was like shocked, but I was like shaken by it, honestly. And she was like, he's not kidding. Like, this is not like a drunken joke. Like, this is actually real. Like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to talk to him. And so fast forward two years and like, they are on a little bit more solid ground than that. Like I, that's the, the one and only time he said the thing about the will, but um it's still like there. It's still the elephant in the room. But I remember so well thinking, oh my gosh, someone who is in my close inner circle is dealing with this level of strife. It's like, I I have to look. And I remember you and I talking about this and then me being like, I'll just find somebody who talks about, you know, how to heal things across the political divide. But I mean, I thank God for Google algorithms because Tanya came right up and it was a shot in the dark because our first guest, the amazing and luminous Aaron Cox, I mean, I don't want to say this in any negative way, but Aaron, you were a sure thing if you're listening. Like I was <laughs> I was so excited to talk to you and Karen, you being so close friends with her, but Tanya was, that was a shot in the dark. I mean, it's because we're soulmates. Like yes. go- the Google, the Googles brought us all together because we are soulmates and it was meant to be. And I could not more be more grateful. I mean, I, I'm sorry. The origin story is so sad, but also I could not be more grateful for Tanya. So seriously, seriously. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So Tanya. Okay. So, so yes. go, no, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say Aaron too, though, as our first guest, like she is just that was so incredible. And that was a very unique experience because I was just really out. I was, <laughs> I was recording in the backseat of my new Subaru. <laughs> oh my God. It's like a hundred degrees out, by the way, when that, I was doing that. Oh God. Just yeah. a riot. <laughs> Listeners, uh, that is was episode, episode five, by the way, if you want to go back and hear Aaron Cox, who is a dear, 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 dear friend of mine and an amazing jewelry artist and just is doing the most badass shit with her life. And uh, obviously we live together in Chicago and she sold her condo, gave away and sold a bunch of her shit and moved to Estonia to study jewelry making. And like within months, like her work was like on the cover of a magazine and like she's had solo exhibitions. And I mean, it's just this wonderful example of what can happen when you just go for it. Fucking go for it. Just stop being afraid and just do it. Yes. I should Mm. go back and listen to that episode actually, because she was also super, super honest when it came to hard topics, like, you know, like how she supports herself and like what she does with isolation and like all of these different things. And then she was also super funny and fun and like lighthearted. It was all the things. I mean, yeah. She was perfect amazing. first guest yeah. yeah 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 I remember her saying at the very beginning of when she she came on she was like long time listener first time caller and like <laughs> it was our fifth episode so I was like <laughs> you are my favorite person <laughs> oh my god uh we can't so we've had 14 guests total I feel like we shouldn't list them all because people are like oh my god you guys we get it but yeah I do have to mention I mean, is it mean to mention? I mean, I know all of these people. I can't just mention the people. No, no mention. We should just like, we should, we can identify like two more. I feel like that's perfect. Okay. So <laughs> it's hard to know which ones know, we're I'm not, not, this is not favorites friends. This is not, these are not favorites. Ooh. Okay. I feel like we're good. We mentioned our first guests and our most recent guests. If you have been on, we love you. You know who you are. We do. We do. And I'm gonna leave it at that. So nobody feels left out. Okay. That's fair. That's totally fair. Also, I would like to put in a plug for the many, many revenue generating opportunities that we have ideated on this podcast, Karen. I mean, hello. Like we have not trademarked any of those things, but people please don't steal them. We like, unless you're going to give us some of the profits, then please take it away. But like, yeah, we're here for it. But tuxedo chocolates, I mean, this is, 
I don't know how many times we talked about tuxedo chocolates. And for those of you who don't know what tuxedo chocolates are, tuxedo chocolates that very much plays into my challenges when it comes to sugar and that I do not have, um, I have a hard time with, you know, keeping it, uh, small in terms of the quantity of sugar that I have. So the idea was to have a man in a tuxedo, uh, deliver one, (laughs) one inch squares of chocolate, only one, one, one inch square of chocolate per night forever. And I would pay for that subscription service. And then we decided to make this ourselves. Yeah. This is genius. Genius. He has to be in a tux tails, top hat, (laughs) all of it. (laughs) Delivering this one square of chocolate. Yes. And not really talk to me that much. I mean, hello, goodbye. That's cool. But you know, just your eye candy. And that is your purpose. Well, and I don't, he can be like the guards at Buckingham Palace. Like we don't need 100%. you to say anything. Also, I feel like just to acknowledge the expansiveness of gender and attraction, I feel like you can also get a woman in a tuxedo, a non-binary person 100%. in a tuxedo. Mm. Such a good point. Yes. Anyone, truly anyone wearing a tuxedo can, (laughs) can deliver. We are not discriminating in any way for any gender whatsoever. And the chocolate needs to be highest quality, like the highest quality. Don't give me any of that Hershey bullshit, like nothing made in the U S please. Um, although actually there are some good U S based chocolate, whatever. Anyway, the point is it needs to be good. Yeah. Yeah. And if you are one of those rare freaky people who doesn't like chocolate, we could bring you something else. That's fair. That is fair. Only in a bite-sized piece, though. That's the point. Yeah, like a one square of a graham cracker. Yeah. That's <laughs> oh, <God, laughs> so sad. <laughs> <laughs> one chip. <laughs> like a single <laughs> Cheeto. <laughs> oh, my God. How amazing would it be if you got a single Cheeto <laughs> from a person in a fucking tuxedo? Yeah, we're cracking ourselves up. No alcohol at all involved in this. <laughs> Should have done this as a happy hour. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, seriously, we need to have another happy hour. That is, I think we seriously have had one happy hour, Karen. How tragic is that? I know. Yeah. Well, it was probably with Brianna because she's a bad influence. That's a good point. Brianna's a great one, though. She has yeah. really good suggestions on pop culture. But yes. And then also our sponsorship, our sponsorship ship. I can't. Go ahead. Sponsorship. That's really how I'm saying that. Sponsorship slots. Yes. Yeah. They've been epic. Well, and I realized the last couple of episodes, we've completely forgotten to do that. Completely. 100%. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. Not on purpose did we stop. Just didn't do them because we forgot. Totally. I do think that one of my very favorites, though, is that this episode is brought to you by sweating. (laughs) (laughs) That's seriously just i mean that really is funny like that's that's i mean it's and and talk about truth i mean this week is record record high temperatures i was talking to people at work today in new york and i'm like oh god i mean is it bad in chicago too here it's not well actually it is it's 100 degrees but oh shit thank god i'm in air conditioning but like i just feel bad for people who don't have air conditioning because there's so many people like that like in san francisco it's not 100 degrees there but it's, I remember calling elderly people back when it would get above 80, like mm-hmm. to, as part of this nonprofit that I was part of, because like, that's actually so dangerous. Like, it's so dangerous. Like, I mean, Europe, oh, I know it's hot here. Like I, I have air conditioning, but I have all my windows open and I fortunately get a good cross breeze. So I think it's oh, fine it's in here. Like, right. It's, I, I just really like the breeze. The cats, meanwhile, are like, bitch, what are you <laughs> doing? why why is this the hell that I live in (laughs) oh my god what did I do in one of my past nine lives to deserve this are they just like splayed out like on the on the hardwood like that's where I would be if I was like oh no they're on your couch okay well sometimes they do splay themselves out on the hardwood and I mean Flapsy's a glutton for punishment behind me that's a heating pad she's laying on so man she's just cooking herself it's not my fault (laughs) 
Oh my gosh. I mean, that's another thing with these two years, we have gone through so many, like we've gone through two years of, you know, weather changes. We've gone through two years of like really significant life changes for both of us, life changes that have been anticipated, life changes that have not been anticipated. Um, yeah, a lot happens in two years. That's a real thing. Like, it's like, that's, you can't really hide behind things it, when you do something for this long. No, it's true. And the odd thing I'm, that just, what's odd for me about this conversation, not odd in a bad way, but odd in a, like, we're talking about what we've done with this podcast in the last two years against the backdrop of not doing a fucking thing in the last two years. Like the last two years are just like a complete black hole in my life in terms of like, oh, remember when I took that trip? Oh, that was 2019, right? Like that yes. that thing we all do about like, oh my God, I haven't seen you since. Oh shit, that was 2019. Yes. So yes. it's odd to be talking about this thing that we did during a time when I feel like nothing happened. That's so true. It's like, it's the one thing that fills that box. Like there's not yes. a lot that you can say that is, or at least that I can say that is super positive that happened within the past years. There's a few things. There's a few shining moments like that wedding I went to and I, when I went mm. to Portugal, but those are trips. Like those are trips. It's like, that's hard to like, those are not the norm. Um, yeah. Life has just completely changed since July 27th of 2020 in so many ways. I mean, I, speaking of not seeing people since 2019, Karen, you and I haven't seen each other since 2019. I don't think, or was it 2018? No, I think it was 2019. I think, Ooh. I think it was October, 2019 because I came back after my nephew's homecoming. Anyway, this is a lot of detail, but like, yes, I think it was, I, and it was super, super short. Like we could only see each other for like a 30 minute coffee. Oh, that's right. Yes. Oh my gosh. That's right. We had, yes, we had coffee or whatever that was near the reader office. That's right. In the South. Yes. yes. And you had just, you, well, I guess you had been at the reader for not very long, well, like a year at that point, something like that. But yeah. 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 Oh, good memory. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. But yes. Yeah. I, I guess we haven't talked about teasing this, but I am excited about, I just, I just have to say, because <gasps> I know that the next, within the next year, I'll be looking back and saying that this was a highlight, but listeners, Karen and I are going to see each other in person in I guess like six weeks six oh my god yeah like early early September I'm so excited I ser I seriously can't wait like I on Saturday I woke up and I was like fuck this I want to see my friends in Chicago like this is ridiculous like and so Tyler and I just got on Airbnb booked flights <laughs> and that was that I mean I checked with you and Kate to make sure that you were going to be there because that would be a bummer if you weren't but I don't know what's going to happen but visitors <laughs> visitors visitors no uh listeners stay tuned oh my god I'm so excited. I'm so excited too. I don't even know what it's going to, I mean, I'm like, holy shit. I need to meet the church ladies. There's a lot of things. I know. Oh my God. Um, okay. Are we done with our trip down memory lane? Cause I know you, you had a really good idea for the other thing we should talk about. Yes. Uh, let's, let's be done. And I already forgot about my good idea. What was it? Like, what was it? Shoot. <laughs> well, you kind of, you kind of talked about it. Like, what are we going to do next? So this is yes. what we did these first two years, these first 95, oh my God, episodes. Unbelievable. So what's, what's next? What is next? I mean, I would like to have more guests. I love having talking with you and I, I do, and I don't want it to like, like tip the scales of like saying that we're going to have more guests than just the two of us. But I do think it would be interesting to have guests like on the, you know, we talk about all different types of things. I feel like we're scratching the surface. Like there is mm. so much to talk about. And I think that there's, you know, like before we hit record, we were talking about food and we were talking about, you know, like, you know, like stuff in our bodies. And like, I don't know if like, we haven't talked about that that much. Like I want to talk about, you know, like friendship. I know like I want, okay. So I have to say Glenn Doyle has a very good episode this week with Reese Witherspoon. Have you listened to it? Ooh, I haven't yet. And it's all about friendship. And one of the things they talk about is Glennon is having a challenging time. Listeners, if you don't know what we're talking about, it's called, um, what is it? Uh, of course we I can, can do, do yes. we can do hard things. We can do hard things. Thank you. And, um, and she's basically asking Reese, 
Like, how do you make friends? Like, how do you keep friends? And one of the things Reese says, which this will just, you know, you don't even have to listen to the episode. But this is basically the biggest crux of it is that she's like, you have to make as many, you know, you have to make deposits. There's deposits in a relationship and there's withdrawals in a relationship. And it's like, there needs to be equal from both. Like you, e- each person needs to be making deposits in the relationship and, it's that reset it much more articulately, but like, I just feel like, yeah, there's something there. That is, that to me is a mic drop. Yeah, It really is. Because without that mutuality, one of you isn't getting what you need. And it's just, you're just going to feel resentful. Yes. And that's a shitty feeling. Yeah. Like that's crappy. And I've definitely felt it. Have you ever felt that? Like, no, oh, yeah, totally. Totally. I feel like it's such a universal thing for people to feel. So I feel like friendship, there's something with that. I feel like there's, you know, we could do whole, like a whole series on different things. Like, yeah, I just, I feel like there's a lot to be excited about in the future. And I do think that merch is actually really exciting to have. Also, I think it would be amazing to like hire an editor someday. And <laughs> like, not that I don't like editing. It's not, that's not what it is. It's more that like, I think it'd be awesome to have that editor be like an editor slash PR person slash get our guests person slash slash slash. You know what I mean? Oh, a thousand percent. Uh, listeners, if you know anyone looking for an wonderful unpaid opportunity <laughs> yes or if you are looking for an unpaid opportunity we're really fun we're fun <laughs> so we're blast oh my god we're, we're total blast we would be really nice bosses i promise oh my goodness katie thank you for saying all of that because it's funny because one of the things i was afraid of not afraid of but during all of these false alarms of like the pandemic's over get back out there Oh, just, oh, JK, everybody you know has COVID now. During all of the different rounds of that, one of the things I thought was like, if the pandemic is over, what are we going to talk about? Yeah. Because we initially framed ourselves as a way, as coping with co- quarantine. Yes, exactly. That's what we said. Yeah. And so I really had this like, oh man, if we're not coping with quarantine, what, what, what are we going to talk about? <laughs> right. Like, God, yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, but you're so right. I felt the exact same way. I remember in particular feeling that way like last summer when it was right before delta and it was like that that like six week grace period where people stopped wearing masks and stopped getting sick and then i was like oh i don't even ever have to wear a mask again it was as if it was just you know it was such a beautiful time and i was i really i thought the same thing you're not the only one i was like wow like i i don't want to be negative but i don't actually think we're not negative at all. Like, of course I'm not okay. Yes. That is the name of this podcast, but there's so much more to it than just the quarantine. There's so much more. It's just life. We're just talking about life. We're a thousand percent just talking about life and universal themes of life that we would be experiencing in or out of quarantine. hundred percent. Some of it, of course, is very, is a specific to the experience of quarantine, but a lot of it like rage, we're just going to be mad all the time. Yeah. Yeah. This is, we live here. Yes, (laughs) Yes, <laughs> as you say. <laughs> oh my God, we just fucking live here now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wonder what else for the future. Like, do you feel like there's a million more topics that we can? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, and a million people, you're right, that I want to talk to. And there are all of these things. I feel like you and I have this taboo list of mm-hmm. things we have wanted. <laughs> It's long. It's a yeah. long list. Though, so like, oh, that would be a really good conversation, but I don't think we can go there, right? Like, mm-hmm. I mean, there's that list, and and I think there are a million conversations to be had about not well, quote unquote, coming out of this, but never really coming out of this as completely different people. Yes, yes, completely. Who even are we now? Our friendships are different. Our relationships are different. Our occupations are different. The world is different. Like who, who even are we now? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, I think it's so interesting and like serendipitous, I guess, that we like started this when we did, because it's just, we're like riding this wave. Like, it's like, it's just, this is the new, this is our new life and it's not new. It's two and a half years old. And Mm. yeah, I mean, 
it's just it's like after having covid this these past few weeks you know i was talking with tyler and he was like i think this is just what it's going to be like this is you know we're going to get it we're going to get over it like we're not we know it's going to be two years or two not two years two weeks if you're vaccinated and you know lucky of not feeling that good but then you're going to get it better and it's like this is just what it is and yeah but who are we right now for sure i think that that's i don't know yeah it's like we can also invent it it's like that's there's like opportunity with that beauty with that i think yes well and and exploring that theme with other people who quit their jobs during this time left their relationships moved you know and i'm just thinking of um i was in alabama a couple of weeks ago and my grandfather has several favorite restaurants and we went to one of his favorite restaurants for dinner. And there's a guy outside, like in an apron, like legit, like outside in the parking lot with an apron. And we we're like, hi, are you guys open? And he's like, no, I'm sorry. We had to close at five today. Cause we don't have any staff. Oh, and he's like, wow. and we're going to close at five again tomorrow. Like that, that just happened. That was not a middle of pandemic experience. That was like two weeks ago. So that I feel like what, what do all of these things look like? And like his staff, he at one point presumably was fully staffed. Like, what are those people doing now? And what have, what are they doing with their lives? And it's so funny, like after um, Break My Soul came out, Beyonce, like this wave of people being like, oh, I just quit my job. And Beyonce quit her job, I'm gonna quit my job, right? Like, I just am curious about work and all of the things. Yes. I love this so much. Thank you for bringing that up. Like I would love to talk to people like who have experienced these changes. I think every single one of us has experienced these changes on some level or another, but wait, hold on a pin in that. Um, has Beyonce quit her job? What? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, I just, the beginning of break my soul is I just fell in love. I just quit my job. Ah, uh, got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. And her, um, apparently the, we have a song list for the new album. I don't think it's out. Lizzo's album is out, but we have a song list for Beyonce's album. Oh, wait, like Beyonce. Wait, we have a song list for. Well, like it's out in the world. It's in the world. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Wait, okay. have you heard "Break My Soul"? I need to listen to the lyrics. <gasps> I've heard part of it, but I haven't heard the whole. I haven't like. I need to read the lyrics or listen much better. Yes, I'm pretty sure it's. I just quit. Yeah, I just fell in love. I just quit my job. Okay, that's awesome. I mean, I feel like the ramify like i i'm writing a story right now about you know how companies can retain workers and they can't they can't like it's like how are people retaining workers that's not a thing right now that's not even the right question like what's happening with the work i'm interested in like where are the workers coming from like where are they going where are they coming from what are people doing how are they existing like is everyone living on less like i don't understand if they're not working like i have so many questions i mean one of the things that just came up in my inner circle yesterday so my uncle um comes from southern florida all the way to northern michigan every year to go to our cottage my family's cottage up there and he always stays in atlanta for the first night and then he drives all the way to where my mom is and then whatever they go up together and um his transmission blew in kentucky yesterday and he has like a he loves hondas and so he went to the honda dealership and the honda dealer was like oh we don't have any cars like no cars what? like it's a dealership with no cars what? and and then he went to another honda dealership like across town he couldn't find there were no cars this is not even just a honda issue and so he was like okay, well, I'm literally strand, like his car's dead. So he had Aww. to go to a Hyundai dealership, which he found a great car and everything's fine. And he's like, you know, lucky enough that he was able to buy it on the spot. Like kind of, I guess it runs in my family that like people buy their cars on the spot like I did. But like, the thing is, is that that like those supply chain issues were created during the early days of the pandemic. And like now we're two and a half years later. And like, I have another person in my family who works as a car salesman and he is I mean how is he supposed you know it's just I think he's doing okay but I think he's also really really scared I think there's a lot of people who are really scared like there's just isn't product it's interesting damn yeah it it's is just, interesting it's just like but it, I mean with the restaurant industry it's like it would be so fascinating to talk with people like a chef or like someone who owns a restaurant group or like how, I mean, I see those signs everywhere, Karen, and I bet you do too in Chicago, like a thousand dollar signing bonus for a line cook, like that kind of stuff. Oh my God. Yeah. 
yeah, there's a lot that we still have to talk about. We have a lot more to say. There really is. I really went on a major tangent about the Honda thing, but like, but yes, thank you for listening. There's so much more to say and I'm excited. I'm excited for the next chapter and listeners, please, please. We love hearing from you. If you have things that you want us to talk about or people that you want us to talk to, no one's too big. Michelle's on the list. Let <laughs> us know. <laughs> please do. Happy anniversary, everyone. Yes. Happy anniversary.